right. I have my I have my special friend. The cat is here. <laughs> I got yeah. my bulldog on my lap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Let's we'll see. Here he is. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty cat. Yeah. What kind yeah. is that? Uh, it's a Cornish Rex. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah, he's the boss over the dogs here. Oh, so I'm sure. when he's uh, when he's here, the dogs are gone. <laughs> I bet, I bet. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, well, I guess we'll just get going here. Um, yeah. In, introduce yourself and and uh, talk about the breed of dog that you uh, show and and uh, breed and what brought you into that dog life world. Yeah, uh, the dog life world started uh, long ago, not with the Cimarrons. Uh, it was the Belgian Shepherds from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And uh, to say something about me, uh, my name is Jessica and I'm from Stockholm from the beginning, the mm -hmm. capital of Sweden, but now I live in South Sweden. Uh, so I've been living here for almost 10 years, I think mm -hmm. now because it's closer to Europe. Um, I uh, always loved dogs, but mm -hmm. I was not allowed a dog because my mother wouldn't want a pet at home. So mm -hmm. I got horses instead. Oh boy, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, so horses was first. Then came the Belgian Shepherds when mm -hmm. I moved from home. And uh, from there I went to the dog Argentino okay. to start breeding uh, and um, the dog Argentino will always be in my heart, but mm -hmm. uh, it's a breed that has many problems because mm -hmm. it's a lot of uh, mixed breed in it, 11 breeds. Right. Uh, so I, I wanted to find something that was uh, better and mm -hmm. more towards the Belgian Shepherds. And I stumbled on a little article in a magazine about the mm -hmm. Cimarrons and was mm -hmm. like, wow, I'm getting that one. Okay. So I did that in, uh, I think it was 2007. Mm -hmm. uh, so they just been um, provisionally recognized by FCI. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he was uh, my first mate, Pancho was the first mate to come to Europe. He's uh, soon uh, 12 years old now. Wow. A grumpy old man. So <laughs> that was got me into Cimarron's. So... If he would not have been the dog he has been, I would not have got another one. That's for mm -hmm. sure. Okay. Uh, they are a handful. Are they? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why would you say that they're a handful? Uh, if you don't activate them, mm -hmm. uh, I can tell you it's going to show in your house everywhere. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. So they're very active so. inside. They're active all the time. Uh, oh. Yeah. Uh, normally, they want to be in the center. Mm -hmm. Always with their owner. If the cat mm -hmm. is not beside me. Right. Uh, but uh, for the moment, uh, I would say you need to do some brain exercise with them. Mm -hmm. Not just walking them or obedience or stuff mm -hmm. like that. You really need mm -hmm. to exercise the brain. Uh, and they need to learn to relax. Right, right. So you imported your first Cimarron from Uruguay, or? Yes. Yeah. Wow. So. Yeah, it was a long trip for him. Right. How long have you been um, uh, in the show world? Oh, my God. That is a long time. Um, let me see now. I think it must be something over 20 years. Wow. Wow. And tell me about that experience. What, what countries have you gone to and, and what kind of awards you've, uh, rewards have you won? And oh, with, the, with the Cimarrons, um, I've been uh, to, what do we say, Romania, uh, Italy, France, Belgium, Netherlands, Ukraine. Uh, have I missed something? Yeah, Germany, Poland. Yeah, I've been around Europe. You've been around Europe, yeah. 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 And um, the awards that uh, I'm most proud of is uh, the world winner title. That is the biggest show in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I have uh, from the beginning uh, a lot of the titles for mm -hmm. every every year with my dogs. So I'm pretty happy with that for the Cimarrons. Right. Um, what's the history of the Cimarrons as you, as you know it? What was, you know, what are they, where did they originally come from? What breeds do, did they uh, originate from, et cetera? The breeds uh, that are in the Cimarrons, they are actually unknown. Mm -hmm. uh, they have not so, they have some studies on it, but they are not sure. What you can say that you know, maybe, uh, because they uh, uh, started to produce themselves in the wild, is that uh, you have the farmer dogs, mm -hmm. and you have some type of uh, molosser dogs, and you have uh, like sighthound dogs mm -hmm. that are mixed in. Mm -hmm. So it was when uh, to Uruguay, the Spanish and uh, Portuguese conquerors came mm -hmm. and they had dogs with them and they also left the dogs. And then the Cimarrons, uh, they started to produce themselves. So they mm -hmm. were actually wild from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that's the short history. <laughs> right. And when, was, when were they first introduced in, in Europe? In Europe, it was 2007. When, when you? When the came, yes. Okay. Uh, when they went into FCL. Uh, okay. I know some, uh, some Uruguayans that moved to Spain, uh, mm -hmm. maybe brought some with them, but they were not uh, in FCI, and then they don't, uh, they count like a mixed breed if you are not in the uh, pure breed like FCI. Right. So, right. It's a little difficult, but um, from FCI, Pantry is the first one to be registered and okay. been competing with in the show world. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. So, so what are some of the uh, 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 functions of a Cimarron? Uh, like, you know, obviously they're a working dog. Uh, you know, what are some of the jobs that they have today? Uh, today, they still do a lot of herding uh, mm -hmm. with the farmers. Uh, actually, I live uh, neighbors with the 400 sheep, so oh. my dogs, they get to work a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, not all Cimarrons are suited uh, to go and herd the sheep. Uh, mm -hmm. It's more cattle that would be suitable because mm -hmm. they are harder uh, when they work. Mm -hmm. uh, also, obedience and mm -hmm. tracking. Um, like blood tracking, also special search. Uh, I'm doing a little um, special thing now. I just started with it to train one of uh, my dogs to find, uh, what do you say? Uh, the end, in the end, it will be he will search for narcotics. Uh, okay, well, awesome. Yeah, I hope, hopefully for some prisons here in Sweden, but I oh, don't wow. know. He has to pass a lot of tests, so right. I keep my fingers crossed, and it takes about two years to get there, so we'll see. Mm -hmm. uh, but they love the agility. They are pretty much up to whatever you do. Mm -hmm. What you ask them to do, they do. Mm -hmm. So if you want to make it cross country running or uh, have them in front of your bike going on races no problems uh, mm -hmm. they also like uh, the lure coursing like the side towns do mm -hmm. to chase uh, they love to do it so they they are all round dog you can do many things with them mm -hmm. also today and how would you say that they would be for something like um uh, personal protection or um, property guarding and stuff like that? Mine, they are always outside uh, at my yard and no one steps in here because they they tell me when people mm -hmm. come. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see quite different if it's a person they know or if it's a new person. Mm -hmm. uh, you hear the difference uh, at the bark. Mm -hmm. uh, I have no doubt they would protect me, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, since I had the dog Argentino, uh, I, I'm not the person that thinks you should awake things that are there natural right. uh, if you're not going to compete right. in it. 
Uh, and here in Sweden, you can only compete if you have uh, breeds like uh, German Shepherd and stuff mm -hmm. like that. We have uh, okay. very strict rules here for doing protection mm. work. Okay. So, right. But uh, I know there are some breeders in Uruguay that does it and mm -hmm. they do not compete in it and uh, they show a lot of skill. Um, I train mine just uh, when they are puppies just to learn to bite you know to mm -hmm. have the grab and bite and then get the prey mm -hmm. and run away and they do it really well so I think if you can do it yes uh, you can do it really good but then mm -hmm. go to competition not just for fun because it's, right. uh, you need to know what you're doing absolutely so would you say that they'd be a good uh, catch dog for like hog hunting or anything like that uh Compared to the dog Argentino, I would say no. Okay. <laughs> no, yeah. because uh, I think that they are they are tough. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know they hunt with them in Uruguay. But uh, when I compare the breeds, since I had the dog Argentino, it's mm -hmm. uh, many different things. So I would say not my first choice for that. Not yet. Okay. Right on. Um. So if somebody was going to get a Cimarron for uh, uh, pet purposes, how would they uh, interact with um, other house animals, like small um, dogs, and cats, etc.? Small dogs, uh, no problem. Uh, they like them. Then mm -hmm. there's always can there can always be complications. Uh, we know that because all dogs uh, or cats don't love each other. Mm -hmm. uh, my cat, he actually moved in here after uh, my my foundation uh, mm -hmm. female, and she hates cats, and he moved in after her. Uh, she didn't accept him, but uh, she didn't chase him either. Okay. She was just like, I'm here, go away, and the cat was running. <laughs> 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 so I think uh, you just need to introduce the animals in the right mm -hmm. way and mm -hmm. for small dogs uh, I have friends that have uh, chihuahuas and other small breeds never a problem mm -hmm. sometimes they, of course they can play hard you need to watch mm -hmm. them so mm -hmm. they are not playing too hard mm -hmm. so what uh, what is, what does your kennel setup look like for the Cimarrons, what's uh, what's important to, to have if you were to have a, a stable of Cimarrons? Uh, I live on the countryside. Uh, mm -hmm. As I said, I have my 400 sheep as neighbor. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also have some cattle here. Uh, mm -hmm. So I have uh, my little uh, farm. Um, so they go out. They are out most of the day. Uh, mm -hmm. They don't like to be inside if it's not really bad weather here. Mm -hmm. They prefer to be outside. And mm -hmm. they come and go in and out as they please. Um, I have a dog house where they can uh, be allowed to go in and out all day. And mm -hmm. when I'm home, they are also inside my house. Okay. And then my house is really full. <laughs> how, many, how many dogs do you have? Uh, I have six dogs at the moment, okay. uh, but uh, I have five Cimarrons, and mm -hmm. the number six is uh, my Saluki. So, and, and you also show the Saluki? Ah, uh, yeah, from time to time. Uh, time to time. She's just uh, my kennel dog. She's just my fun dog. Okay. And how? And the Cimarrons are good around her. Oh, she thinks she is the Cimarron. She, she grew that. up with the, yeah. She grew up uh, with the dog Argentino and the Cimarron. Oh, so actually, okay. she's not a Saluki. Okay. Uh, she guards uh, even more than they are doing. So okay. she's the caller when someone comes. She runs. She gets uh, the rest of the pack and go and say, "Help me!" <laughs> yeah. <I'm coming." laughs> so it's funny. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> What does uh what does your morning routine look like when uh with the dogs? My morning yeah, my morning routine is uh, I work night shifts. Yeah. So Me too. Yeah. So actually um when I come home in the morning <laughs> Yeah. Uh 
I go out with them. We are outside. Uh, yeah. Depending on the weather, we can be by the house playing or we go for a walk uh, around an hour. Uh, then we go and eat breakfast. Mm -hmm. And then I go to sleep and uh, they are actually in the doghouse or outside. As mm -hmm. they wish. Mm -hmm. And when I wake up, again uh, several hours later uh, we go training I have one dog per day that I go training with okay so one dog gets uh, good attention one day and then it's rest the next day okay. sometimes I bring two dogs but uh, it's also difficult if you really want to spend time with them alone when you have so many I mm -hmm. prefer to give them uh, like one or two hours alone per week mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. not just being in the pack. It's important for them. Right. So right. Um, that's, uh, that's pretty much our morning routine. Mm -hmm. So our morning is two times a day here. Right. Right. And what's the purpose of, of your uh, training? What, what do you work on and, and what are you trying to instill? Uh, most time uh, we try to do something with the sheep uh, if they are still outside uh, mm -hmm. and now they are so I try to go there because it's uh, it's the best for them uh, to uh, burn out some energy and get to think mm -hmm. uh, otherwise uh, I have different some I go tracking with and some I do go do obedience with or mm -hmm. some uh, I do some gaming uh, brain activity inside mm -hmm. the house uh, to find uh, find things or open things or get me the keys or stuff like that. So mm -hmm. they can be pretty useful. So that's the training basically we do. Mm -hmm. uh, my All my dogs, mm -hmm. they are very free. Uh, I don't like to have too much commands on mm -hmm. them. Uh, so they can pretty much do as they please as mm -hmm. long as they are behaving nicely mm -hmm. right. and not tearing my house upside down. Yeah. Have you had to deal with a lot of that? Uh, yeah, I had um, a surgery many years ago and mm -hmm. uh, I had a friend that came to take the dogs out for walks. That was not enough. Um, somebody shooed my wall. Uh, I had some major renovation to do after that. Right. Oh boy. Yeah. All right. So, do you compete with any kind of dog sport, or is it just pretty much the showing? Or it's the showing. Uh, we have here uh, since in Scandinavia, the breed is also uh, new. You can say to the to the dog world. Uh, I'm trying to get them to get approved in the herding, uh, mm -hmm. but it's not that simple here. It's a long way to go. And the nearest the herding competition, I think, is in Czech Republic. So mm -hmm. it's um, far to go. But mm -hmm. maybe one day we can, uh, we can go. Uh, I have a lot uh, to train because it's not the same type of... Uh, of herding like the border collies so i have to you know fit it in uh, the right uh, competition mm -hmm. for them right what kind of advice would you have for somebody who were was gonna um you know own a summer on what uh what are some of the things that they should uh, be prepared for and and uh what kind of things that uh, a summer on needs that maybe other other breeds don't uh i would say say first uh always uh, be very careful when you choose your breeder mm -hmm. uh, that goes for any breed uh you need to have a good contact with the breeder mm -hmm. uh, you need to see all the dog's health declarations and stuff like that mm -hmm. So you have no dysplasia on the hips. They should be free. Uh, you should also know the mentality of the parent's dog. Get some proof. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, uh, when you got your Cimarron puppy, mm -hmm. uh, from the start, uh, train with it. Uh, go and see that it can relax. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell it now it's time to relax. And also, don't let it uh, 
push you around. They are really good to get what they want. Mm -hmm. uh, so sometimes it's hard to say no. Uh, mm -hmm. and uh, they really want to be in the center all the time. So you have to mm -hmm. learn them to go and sleep in the wrong place. Uh, also, socialization with uh, other pets, animals, uh, yeah, cats, uh, children, all the normal stuff, I would say. It's uh, mm. pretty much they need. Um, something special uh, yeah you need to be prepared when they grow up they are very active uh, mm -hmm. and uh, when you have uh, several of them they can uh, really get you annoyed sometimes <laughs> <laughs> right they, they are always happy what i like with them they are always happy the tail is always wagging uh, okay. they are up for anything so if you're not happy, if you're sad and you come home and they come directly to you, wagging your tail like, hey, you're home, let's go, we do something. <laughs> right. um, so it's, it's hard to get angry on them. But um, I would say socialization, activation, it's very important. Mm -hmm. It's not just the dog that you take out for a 10 to 20 minutes walk. Mm -hmm. Then you have the wrong breed. It's definitely not an apartment dwelling dog, right? Ah, uh, yeah. I have puppy buyers that live in apartments. That, okay. Uh, they do great. Uh, they go out several times and they have the dog on daycare, mm -hmm. uh, which I think it's also good. Um, now I know all the countries have different rules, but here, mm -hmm. here we can't leave the dogs uh, more than six hours if we go to work. Okay. Uh, they need someone to watch over them and mm -hmm. if it's a puppy or an old dog they need uh, not six hours you have to check up on them earlier mm -hmm. uh, I think that's good that you cannot just leave them a whole work day uh, then mm -hmm. you have to get daycare for them right mm -hmm. so but they fit for an apartment if you have an active life and if you like to uh, be out uh, walking uh, hiking or something mm -hmm. like that uh, mm -hmm. then the cimarron suits really well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and do you also do you breed or you just show no i breed uh, mm -hmm. yeah uh, i had uh, some litters uh, people ask me why i don't have more litters but uh, i breed for myself uh, mm -hmm. and i only breed if i think i have uh, animals that are good enough uh, therefore, for me, uh, the queue is very long to get a puppy, but I mm. believe I want to have uh, the best, what I think is the best. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, maybe I breed, it's not even once a year, it's uh, every second year or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... You have six, have you imported all your dogs or did you? Uh, no, uh, I have, at the moment I have Pancho, he's uh, imported, uh, mm -hmm. Vito, he's also from Uruguay. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I also have uh, my newest, Albarino. Mm -hmm. uh, he's uh, soon, ah, yeah, he's nine months old at the moment. Wow, wow. Yesterday or today, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I have uh, two grandchildren uh, Pesuna and Sangre, that uh, is from uh, a litter from my puppy buyer. Uh, okay. So they are brother and sister. Yeah. Uh, one of my females, mm -hmm. my own bred, uh, she um, passed away uh, earlier this year, sadly. Oh. Mm -hmm. And also uh, her mother. So they left. Uh, so right now, I don't have anything with my own kennel name at home. Yeah, right, so, right. Yeah, but um, I can survive that. And one I sold because she could not live in the pack. She was a dog to live alone. Okay. Uh, and I, I think she has a great time now and better for her to not okay. be, to right. be alone. Mm -hmm. And you talked about hip dysplasia. Is there any other kind of issues that may arise with the, with the Cimarron? 
of course, every dog can have skin problems. Every dog can get allergies. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, it's so uncertain to say what this what this thing comes from. But uh, mm -hmm. I think if you just uh, have the dysplasia, you will be fine. Yeah. Um, that's what I've gone through when I checked in when I imported my dogs in Uruguay uh, of the parents and. I have not seen any hip dysplasia. I have, uh, well, now I'm thinking, I have one female uh, that had a mark on her hips. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I don't think, you can get this anywhere, mm -hmm. in any breed, right. if you are unlucky. So I mm -hmm. think the environment is uh, fooling us uh, a little bit because... Um, the environment with the food and how you train your dog if you uh, always uh, let your dog walk on the leash when it's young uh, mm -hmm. I don't think it's good I think they should run free uh, mm -hmm. because it's the best way for them uh, to exercise mm -hmm. so it's a lot of things but the hip dysplasia of course and uh, I also do the heart scan uh, on my breeding animals because I like to know the hearts are okay, especially on the female, mm -hmm. uh, of course, on the male as well, uh, because heart diseases, you don't want to get uh, in the, into your breeding. So, mm -hmm. Right, absolutely. What kind of diet do you, uh, do you feed your dogs? Uh, you know, right now, they eat uh, dry food. Um, mm. And then they get some raw food on top of that three times a week. And mm -hmm. they also get uh, raw bones mm -hmm. uh, around three times a week. Mm -hmm. And they are happy with that. Yeah. The steamer on with the food, it's no problem. They love every food you give them. Right. It doesn't matter what it is. Can I eat it? Okay, I will eat it. So they're not picky? No. Yeah. No, no, no. You can have um, if I put I put a carrot cake uh, on my table. Mm -hmm. uh, it was gone in uh, like two seconds. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. And how are they with uh, the cold weather there in Sweden? Yeah, uh, no problem. They love it. Uh, yeah. Actually, Pancho's breeder. He was a little bit worried when. <laughs> when they sent me Pancho mm -hmm. I was thinking oh no my god the snow but uh, no they love it uh, yeah. they have a thick undercoat uh, th so they have an undercoat mm -hmm. uh, and uh, when it's a warmer climate you don't see this undercoat as well as you do mm -hmm. here when mm -hmm. we really have the winter and the snow mm -hmm. so, but they, they have no problems with it they love it uh, mm -hmm. when it gets um, now we don't have the same uh, weather system, but when it gets over minus 25 here, mm -hmm. uh, I put uh, a coat on them when we go okay. out. And it, I can say, we don't go out so long. It's cold. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it's too cold for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what do they do? They, they spend a lot of time indoors in the winter. Do they, no, uh... they, they love to be out in the snow. Uh, they... I used to coat on them and we they... go out. Uh, so no problem. Oh, that's, and that's... if we just go out uh, and play by the house, they don't have the coat. We go out and play for like uh, 15, 20 minutes. Then we go inside because then it gets too cold. Mm -hmm. So they're a pretty yeah. hardy breed. Kind of yeah. probably, probably not the same for the doggo, right? Uh, no, I had one doggo. He liked to sleep. He slept outside in the snow, if he could. He loved mm. it. Okay. But he was one, so yeah. Um, it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But the Cimarrons, they are also um, in Uruguay. They lived in the mountains, and mm -hmm. in the mountains in Uruguay, also in the winter time, it can be very cold. Yeah, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you have any upcoming shows that you're uh, you're doing, or? Uh, yeah, I have one in uh, Poland in a couple of weeks, so we're going to travel. And which dogs are you going to show there? Uh, it's the new one, Albarino. 
that is okay. going with me. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now I see uh, some dogs with the crop dealers and some dogs with the not. Uh, F- FCI allows both as far as the showing? Uh, or It depends on the country. Uh, uh-huh. In Sweden, if they are born uh, 2007, uh, like Pancho, they can have crop deers. Uh, born after 2008 here in Sweden, you are not allowed to be shown with crop deers, but you can uh, live here. Okay. But you cannot be on the dog show. Mm-hmm. Um, in Poland, uh, you can come uh, with crop deers if mm-hmm. uh, you have uh, done it in a country like Uruguay, when it's, where it's still legal, mm-hmm. or US also where it's still legal. So it, it depends. Mm-hmm. But most of the countries in Europe have closed for crop dogs entering shows. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, it's pretty hard to find uh, if you import a crop dog to Europe to find a show where to go. It's some still some countries. Mm-hmm. And what's your thoughts on that? Uh, I hate it when uh, I bought my first doggo with ears. Uh, and my first Cimarron has crop ears. I love the crop ears. Okay. Okay. Um, I think it uh, it suits the breed. It's uh, it's really a special thing with the breed um, that makes them so special. With the ears, they look a little bit more like other breeds, uh, but still not. Mm-hmm. But um, I used to flip the ears back to get the right expression when they're mm-hmm. puppies. Mm-hmm. Uh, so no, I prefer the cropped. Mm-hmm. If I get shoes. And what's what was the purpose for cropped ears? Uh, the purpose was uh, in the history uh, when uh, they uh, command a, a shooting of the wild cimarrons because there were mm-hmm. a problem with them. I just have to turn away a little mm-hmm. bit here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm getting cramped in my hand. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, it's no problem. Uh, there was a shooting uh, because they were wild. So uh, they ordered to shoot the dogs and then they will get paid. Mm. Uh, but it was too heavy to carry a dog. So they actually took a piece of the air. Wow. So, so that's the history, what the history say. Then I don't actually know 100% mm. if this is true or not. But uh, right. that's said, what the... you deliver the airs and you got paid. Wow. It's pretty harsh. Um, uh, yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Now, have have they been uh, used for like underground sports in Uruguay, like dog fighting or anything like that? Anything? Uh, not what not what I heard of, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm happy for that since I comes from since mm-hmm. I have had the dog Argentino. That is a breed mm-hmm. that uh, uh, really bad people use as use for dog mm-hmm. fights. Um, I don't like it, so. No, absolutely not. Yeah, that's good. Um, has there been any breeds that uh, have interest you of late that you are thinking about owning, or are you pretty much uh, mm-hmm. on? No, I don't know. I'm not finished with the Cimarrons. Uh, uh-huh. They will always be by my side, and yeah. maybe one day it will come a doggo again living mm-hmm. here. Just. Uh, to be here with me. Uh, I mm. need them. Uh-huh. Um, the Alano interests me a lot. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I just had uh, uh, talked to an Alano breeder, uh, Carlos Gonzalez from Spain, and that breed really is interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the Alano uh, is a little bit also similar to the Cimarrons. Right. Uh, in some ways. Um, and they also are a little look-alike. So, yeah, mm-hmm. it's interest. It's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I had an offer to have a Alano, uh, but uh, at that time uh, I just started with the Cimarron, so it was mm-hmm. it was not uh, you know introduced mm-hmm. one more breed. It's uh, it's hard. So, but maybe mm-hmm. one day. Uh, mm-hmm. I like them a lot. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, what are what are your uh... What are your goals as far as with the Cimarrons? What are you uh, striving for? And... Oh, 
my goals is um, for the moment uh, is um, used to uh, continue uh, showing showing them uh, to the world because they are a pretty new breed still. Uh, so more people get to know the breed. That's uh, still my goal, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, for my kennel, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I achieved so many things. Uh, so mm -hmm. I don't know how I can uh, break my records anymore. It's mm -hmm. getting hard, actually. Uh, it's fun. But um, yeah. I, I don't know what I could do. Uh, I have the special search uh, that I'm starting with one dog. We'll mm -hmm. see how that goes. Um, yeah, that's interesting to me because uh, I spent uh, over a decade in corrections. So um, here in America, they they still use a lot of uh, Malinois and, and things like that. So yeah, that would be, shepherds are great for that. Yeah, that'd be interesting to see a, a Cimarron in action uh, doing something like that. Yeah, yeah actually, you have uh, Vito has the offspring that lives in Switzerland that is yeah. a rescue dog. Okay. Uh, so he's trained to be a rescue dog. So that is also one thing you can do here. We are, mm -hmm. I don't know uh, uh, what we have here, but in Switzerland we have. And uh, for the for the search here, uh, mm -hmm. if you look at the customs or if you look at the, the prisons, uh, what do you use? type of dogs they are moving from the Malinois and the German Shepherds. Uh, they use a lot of Spaniels for search. Mm -hmm. So I think they're getting pretty open uh, to use other breeds if mm -hmm. they see the potential of them. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I've I heard somebody was talking about that they were actually starting to, to train them for, for... Uh, police work as well. That would be interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, how would you compare them with a, a, a Malinois as far as that kind of stuff? The the Malinois is uh, explosive. Yeah. They're really explosive dogs. Uh, and when I started, um, I had my family or my dad's uh, what is it? Is it Cassin? I think uh, they imported the first Belgian Shepherds to Sweden. So mm -hmm. uh, therefore, my choice was very, very simple. But uh, mm -hmm. the best, uh, they were not so hard back then like they are now. All right. Uh, the Malinois especially has turned into something that I don't like because uh, they are too much working dog. Um, you can't not just have the dog. You need to work with it all the time. And then you lost a lot of purpose with the dog because it should be in the family as well. Even if you have a working dog, I think it should be fitted to live in a family. And if they don't get to work, they are very nervous. So mm. uh, for me, the Cimarrons, uh, they are more easygoing. Mm -hmm. Right. You yeah, it's kind of... Yeah. Right. That's kind of important to me as, as how I see it as somebody who doesn't have a lot of knowledge about dogs and is learning. And, and, uh, this is kind of the reason why I started this podcast. It's a, you know, it's a passion of mine to, to do as much research and learn from people that, that have firsthand knowledge. Kind of how I see it is, is that I, I don't want a dog that just has 100% prey drive all the time. I want a dog. I want a, a dog that is a part of my family and is by my side and, and that's why I like to to, to understand the different breeds and breeds that are not well known here in the United States, like the Cimarron, and and so that's interesting to me about that they they can they can sit back and relax and be a part of the family, but also do a job and have a, a prey drive when when called upon. Yeah, because to me it's it's pointless to have a dog that just uh, you know ha has only one purpose. Um, yeah, I, uh, I agree. I agree with you 100%. And the Simmons, they are actually, uh, if you sit and watch TV, they always come and they go mm -hmm. up in the couch, even if mm -hmm. they know they cannot. And they always go and lie next to you or by your feet. They mm -hmm. always want to be by your side. 
That's uh, awesome. Sometimes that can be annoying uh, when you mm-hmm. have guests because some guests they don't say no they think it's so sweet that the dogs are all over them <laughs> but for the owner it's not so fun right. every time uh, right. but uh, I rather have social dogs than dogs that don't like people so yeah absolutely yeah um, what are the uh, what are the standard sizes of the of the cimarron and the weight and the height and all of that Oh, now we come. I now I live in a different part of the world uh, with the measurements and the, the yeah. Weight. But so, see, people yeah. with Google could be smart enough to figure it out. Google yeah. it, so yeah. So you can just I would just... say around around forty kilos. Mm-hmm. And now I mix the male and the females uh, because uh, for me they are. All of my dogs are around 40 kilos, even okay. if they are male or female. Some of them can be a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, 59 to 61 centimeters in height. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm 170. That's pretty much normal height I have. They go to my, uh, to my knees. It's mm-hmm. perfect. Perfect size. Yeah. So size, not too yeah. big, not too small. Mm-hmm. Kind of similar size of the Belgian. Yeah. Uh, I would say the Belgian is a little bit higher, or they are higher a little taller. Yeah, higher, the, legs. The cimarrons, so you have uh, the fore chest and the chest is pretty deep, mm-hmm. so they look they look pretty small actually. Mm-hmm. Okay. They don't look so big. And they're but they're pretty powerful. They can pack a punch uh, if they have to. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I was run over today by two of them. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. They did. They didn't see me. They, they were working, uh, and they just. Wow. Uh, yeah, they were playing, uh, and they came, and uh, it hurt. Oh, I bet. <laughs> so, uh, that's the, that's yeah. the way it is. Yeah. Well, is there anything else that you like to convey and say? No, I don't. I don't think so. I think we covered uh, pretty much all of it. Uh, yeah. What I would say, I don't think it's a dog to own the first time you own a dog. Right. You need experience, and mm-hmm. uh, or. If you're going to uh, own it the first time, you need to go to a great dog school. You need to really shape it up from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Because believe me, if you give me, if you give them one finger, they take the whole hand from you. <laughs> That's right. the same. Uh, right. And they can fool you pretty easy. Mm-hmm. So they're clever dogs. Right. Well, I completely appreciate your time and, uh, I will be in contact with you about um, uh, the the finish of the video and and uh, any time that you want to come on, you got something to say, just let me know and we could we can work something out. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, now none of my dogs has shown up here. Yeah. <laughs> the cat is, is the cat here. Yeah. Uh, She's gardening. But, uh, yeah, he yeah. he's a pain in the ass. He's worse than the dogs. <laughs> uh, but anytime when it's daylight, uh, now we have uh, winter here in Sweden, or we have autumn, but starting mm-hmm. to get winter, so we don't have so much uh, light mm-hmm. during the day. Uh, but when it is light, I gladly go on live with you again and have some yeah. of my dogs outside. Awesome, so that'd be can great. See how how they are acting. Uh, and then they will get uh, a little bit more sense how they are. Uh, that would be normally. Normally, they jump towards the camera on my phone if I'm trying right. to film them because they want right. to be there. Right. So. That would be awesome. Yeah, I'll I'll stay in contact with you, and and that would be perfect. That'd be a good uh, good good show. So. Yeah, you have to go up early, though. Yeah. Hey, I'm. Working nights, as you know, I uh, yeah. I have a weird I have a weird sleep pattern, so I'm up at all hours, so I can I can accommodate. 
Yeah, so, it's the same here. Yeah. Uh, but it's great because you get this I get to spend time with my dogs. Yeah. Yeah. And when it's quiet too, when there's not a lot of, you know, yeah. stuff going around. Yeah. So all right, well, I'll be in contact with you and I really appreciate your time and I had a good time and and I learned a lot. So I hope Yeah, uh, thanks. Yep. Yeah, hope to do it soon again. Yeah. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you very much. All right. Bye. Bye.